call this meeting to order for November 20th, 2019, select board meeting at 6.30. We're gonna roll right into the consent agenda. <coughs> we have two warrants uh, to approve this evening, AP2020S and AP2020. We have the special town election warrant we'll be signing tonight. Um, and then the common victualler license for Five Guys, Burger and Fries. So contingent. Second. Did somebody say second? You did, okay, I didn't hear you, that's all. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, public comments, anyone here for public comment tonight? Since Mark is here, can we do the West Street Route 9 school transportation parking concerns? Sure. David, uh, last time you were going to do a site visit and check it out. Do you have any update on that, that so side? The, the chief of police and Lieutenant Cook and I went to the site and there's a photograph in your attachments. Uh, here's a photograph for the viewing audience. Um, does everybody have the photograph up? Okay, mm -hmm. so we're on West Street on the west side of the common, looking due north uh, to the intersection, which is Route 9, which runs east-west. Uh, there is a police cruiser on the left, right-hand side. And if you can see in the sand about a car length behind that, there is a scrape mark that goes from the green to the asphalt. And on the west side of the street by the sign you'll see that scrape mark uh, continued that is a boot mark that we made in order to um, illustrate the recommendation that the police have made the concern is that uh, cars park on both sides of the street <coughs> a bus traveling eastbound on route 9 and then taking a southbound turn at this intersection very often has difficulty making that if they're our cars parked on both sides. So at the loss of four parking spaces, the cruiser is an indication of how big one of those spaces is. Um, we're recommending that on the east side of the common that the, a sign be posted, no parking here to corner. And on the west side of the uh, sign, uh, west side of the street is a sign that would state no parking between the signs. Um, and that will address, I hope, both the issues, the public safety issue of the school bus and leave sufficient parking for the overflow of parking for Esalon Cafe. Um, and that is the recommendation of the police and I concur. Okay. Mark, do you have any comments on that? Does that sound okay to you to, to uh, uh, mark those areas? Or? Just repeat exactly where the oh, signs yeah. would be. <coughs> just see where the line is. Right. Yep. So there would be a sign there, and, mm -hmm. and it would go from across there to, to the corner. other sign that's okay. across from it. <coughs> yeah, I think. Well, well um, the last time I was here, we had mentioned that we were going to the planning board, which we did last night. Oh. So, um, and they're requesting a site plan approval, um, which we hope to have for the next meeting, December. Third, uh, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. So well, our intention still, we're pushing forward with. Um, taking care of any of our overflow cars and having them parked in at 97 Russell Street. So, um, whatever happens in that section there shouldn't even be an issue for us either way. I don't think so either. I think it's. I think it works for people. I think having those two signs on either side of the street is just taking a little bit away. So I, I don't mm -hmm. think that's a great. Loss. I mean, they can still park behind it if they choose to, but you know, as long as until you get things settled with the planning board, and um, hopefully they'll do the plant sign approval so that you can park in another parking lot. Right. So I, I have so too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have no problem That's, with this. That was exactly what I was recommending, Mark, the other last week. Was just just to clear those corners. There's no parking signs across the street on Lena's side. I just worked there for an hour and a half this morning in the middle of Route 9 and watched the traffic come through that corner going north in the morning 
it, it is absolutely crazy. And we had police officers there and everything this morning, and it was a mess. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to work in that intersection. But I would even take it a step further to do the east side, north and south side, similar to this marking for both intersections on West Street for any future events or any future people using the common. So on the other side of the common also? Are yes. you going both sides of the street yes. south, north too? Yep. So yeah, four, loca this, uh, uh, four locations in. Four so locations. Like an H. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Where that uh, police car is parked, you're talking probably three car lengths between the front of that car and the stop sign where the actual edge of the roadway is, something along those yeah, lines. Yeah, so the, we already have a bylaw saying that you can't park 20 feet from an intersection. Yeah. So then why are we putting signs all over the common and just polluting it with more signs everywhere if we already have an existing law? And uh, not only that, but there's a curb there to prevent anyone from parking there. And I've never seen anybody park there as far as, you know, on the street between the curb and the road there. Um, I don't really have a problem with putting one on the Eslon side of the street just because, you know, there's there is a, one there's, there already. Well, yeah, there's yeah. another street sign, but there's no curb there either. Zoom in right across the street. You zoom across the street. Yeah, I see a million there's signs scattered no, all over there's the common. No parking signs there. There's no parking signs there about the same distance as we want to put on this side. But I'm saying put it on all four corners of the common. I just think it's more signs that we don't need in town. Just cluttering up the common. But it's one thing to have the, the rule there, but to you know, put signs around the entire common next to keep people off it. But we have a lot of visitors who do not sit down and yeah. read the Hadley bylaws. <laughs> yeah. But uh, do we have anybody that actually parks within 20 feet of the intersection? Across on on, um, on the north side, yes. When I used to live on west, yeah. the north side. But there's already signs there. No, not all the way. You said within 20 feet of the intersection. But there's signs yes, there. they're right here. They're, the you two mean, that are there by the are already there. there. Yeah, are, yeah, the, do we just want to go on the bike side? Uh, yeah. But those signs are there, right? That's yeah. what John is pointing out. Yeah. yeah. So instead of plastering them on all corners of the common, everywhere, where there's a, there's no issue we, existing. The, the selectmen did this probably 20 years ago, 15 years ago or so, when uh, the owner, not Alina's, but whatever the Carmen, restaurant was, Carmelina's Carmel Carmel <laughs> was there. And there was a big issue with parking mm -hmm. on both sides of that intersection when that restaurant was open. Well, so at that time, they had put two signs up there to clear the intersection. They used to park across the street and walk across yep. the street when there was an auto parts store there. Yes. And then yes. use that at nighttime and then cross the street, which was like a... But we, we yeah. eliminated one Wait, problem chicken. with the two signs that exist right now, and I would like to see all four corners with signs on. If the curbings work... Is that an easier, it's not a cheaper solution, no. but does it meet David's need to not have so many signs there? If people won't go up on a curb, then extending the curb slightly further might do it. But the okay. curbs, I think, has already goes back to 20 feet or, or so. From yeah. the other side. But you can make it go back however far you wanted them not to park without the signs, because they would recognize they'd be sitting out in the street. Is there any committees? Oh, sorry, can I talk? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Is there any committees or commissions that actually um, are involved with the historic value of the common that could have comments on this that would be very important to the historical the historical decision? Side. Historical commission, commission, yeah, but we don't really, again, we have municipal building, but, you know, that would be different. I know, as we keep yeah. talking about the, you know, how beautiful the common is historic value you want to keep it open to people and now we're going to plaster signs all over the thing for well i feel like it's just on the corners it's not the other thing too is i think we have like a short-term problem and we a need for a long-term solution you know it's like we have this kind of parking issue right now and i agree there we should i agree with david that i don't necessarily like having signs all over the place but also i see people not parking there being a good thing too so how do we to Mark's point, have something short term and long term. You know, what do we do for? I, I I'm not completely convinced that just putting some signs right there is going to mean that people don't park there either. You know, I know what, what it's like. Enforce it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if they start enforcing it, then yeah. Well, I mean, if the rule's 20 feet, 
and I think there a sign 20 feet back that says no parking here to the corner is a good temporary solution but to go back what is it 50 80 however many feet that it's a lot longer than 20 feet <coughs> looks like. Um, why yeah, your I mean, body your body 80 feet back to those footprints yeah yeah roughly it's, it's not blocking any feet <coughs> that they use on in any traffic direction and there's no argument that can be made that a bus can't make it through in that area look at it. it's a the street's wide open because you can see the dirt marks from the cars go wide enough that it's more than the car width. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm okay with something that's temporary. But I don't think it needs to go back 80 feet either. I'll make a motion. I mean, you already, David, you already got a sign here. All you got to do is put two bolts and a no parking sign right on that post. And we're I'll not, we're not putting more posts in. We're not putting bigger signs in. Unless you want neon signs over there. It's flashing lights. You. I'll make well, let's a get one of those flashing light the signs. Recommendation uh, the police on a temporary basis <coughs> and then readdress it once um, Esalen has their overflow parking in place. From which location? Hmm. What, from which location? Where that, the scrape marks are? Is yeah. That? Do we want a second? Yeah, I'll second. I'd like to see them on all four corners. A little. Well, let's just take care of this right all now, right. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, any further discussion about this particular motion? And we're not trying to put you out of business, Mark. <laughs> yeah. I want to make that perfectly clear. I understand. Yeah. We yeah, know, this and, and this is no secret, we've had a tons of complaints about this and from a lot of citizens. So, safety first. Yeah. I think, well, thank this, you. I think this is minimal um, mm -hmm. that we could get this done and do it temporary for right now, see how it works. Yeah. All right. So, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So, David, uh, you'll let the DPW know and have them put up a, a sign. Are we just doing from there to the corner on both sides? Yeah. And then, are the police going to do any patrols there and ticket or anything like that? Or how do we. Well, yeah, that's the only way this works is if you enforce it. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Mark, for coming. And thank you. Hopefully it works. Good luck with the planning board and getting all that passed. They may need it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 all right. So SWOT analysis and do that. So we can do park and rec first if you guys want to go. Um, you all have a copy. I brought him just in case you got time. Got it. I got it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll just go over, I guess, the highlights of it so we don't have to sit here and read the whole thing. But um, I think our biggest strengths in the last year have been uh, our communication with the, both the commissioners and myself with the school department and the superintendent. Um, our biggest <coughs> source of building use are the schools. Uh, since Park and Rec does not have a center to run our programs, we have to uh, run most of our programs out of the school buildings. Um, so I think that's a big strength for us, um, as well as uh, our community events that we run, which are, I think, our yearly events. Um, we have had big showings in the last year. So those, you know, our typical events are the um, Easter Bunny event, the Lunch with Santa, the Halloween parade. Um, this year, unfortunately, the parade got rained out, but we still had uh, a decent showing at the party, so that was good. Um, this has been a, a full year of our online registration system, um, and that's worked fairly well. Uh, more and more parents are jumping on board with creating an account where they can uh, both register and sign up for all our programs and either pay online or um, they have the ability to do all the registration and the paperwork online and drop a check off at the office if they don't feel comfortable um, paying online. So that's been good. Um, Christian, you got to utilize that uh, right. this summer, so mm -hmm. I think you can probably speak to that. Yeah, it works well. Um, and we did run a successful summer program for six weeks at the school, so that was good as well. So hopefully we can continue that. Um, I think our big weaknesses are that this position is still, even though I'm working 37 and a half hours uh, funded, if not more, um, 30 hours are only funded by the town and the other seven and a half hours are paid through the after school program. Um, so that's a big weakness, I think, that it's not 
quote unquote a, a fully funded position through the town. I think that is something that I would like to see um, become fully funded, 37 and a half hour position, if not 40. Um, I think a lot of my time is being spent doing clerical work that um, it's hard to do both clerical work and actual um, park and rec events and things like that. Um, I think another weakness would be the space for programming. Um, no matter where I have a program, I have to rent the space, even through the school. Uh, so we pay for custodial time or usage at the school. So a lot of our budget, which is small to begin with, is being used on space or uh, custodial hours and things like that. And that has to go into, you know, when you do a registration, how much that's going to cost summer camp, even though we're outside, we still had to pay to have somebody at the school to unlock the door so we could use the bathroom. And that goes into how much we have to charge people for different things. Um, so it makes it hard because some of our money is going towards that when the only space we technically have is the office and town hall. Um, yeah, just uh, quickly circling back around on the uh, clerical duties, uh, you know, one position that was in place for quite some time was that 19 hour <coughs> part time position and we're, you know, particularly with the uh, added um, commitment to running the after school program and administering it, um, the, uh, uh, which taxes a lot of Jenny's uh, uh, time that she would dedicate to those types of things, we're, uh, we're going to be looking to champion reinstating that position uh, this coming year. Can I just ask a question on that? I get either Andy or, or Jenny. Um, you mentioned that there, you don't have any software or tools available to you. Are there tools out there for park and rec programming? I'm not, you know, really familiar with any software applications or anything that could help. No, I d we do have a software. That's what this has been a whole year that we've had it in place. The MyRec program the is referenced there. Yeah. That's, that's a, that is a, a recreational software suite. Oh, okay. And this is actually, you know, I would say that, you know, Jenny has been uh, at the forefront in town hall as far as the department that's using online payments. Yeah. And, and yeah. this whole registration process is taking the, you know, some of the uh, names and address uh, aspects of the clerical uh, bit down. There's still a lot of advertising that's involved. In, and quite frankly, the uh, methods of communication are not just phone and fax. You know, those things are kind of long gone. Everybody's texting and instant messaging and, and emails. So there's a lot more channels of which people communicate. And mm -hmm. managing those channels takes that much more time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I have to say, just, you know, I mean, I don't have kids in the, the schools anymore. But the, the level of communication that does come, I mean, it's, it's noticeable. Oh, what a huge improvement. So thank you. I mean, thank you for everything you are doing to get the word out there has been great. Thank you. I feel like we're, things are turning around and I see a difference than when I first stepped in. I feel like things are getting better. Um, but I feel like we have an opportunity to make things even better. Um, either whether that be with more hours on my end or help in the office, you know, just having one extra person in there for half the amount of time that I'm in there would make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Is the after school program, how, how does that financial system work? I, I don't quite understand how you guys run it, but it's through the schools. Are you so it getting is, money and is that, what budget is that going into? How is that all? So we got to a point um, this summer where it kind of was, um, you know, Park and Rec, you've got to start it so that we have somebody there to be the backbone of it. So I was running it for probably about a month I was in there on site for 15 hours a week also in the office um, and it got to a point where I couldn't do it by myself there wasn't enough of me to kind of go around um, Annie was helping us out with that and hiring people and getting everybody in the right spot um, there's now an on-site coordinator program director so to speak um, in there so I was able to back off and take just the seven and a half hours to help with that um, so I do a lot of the billing and administrative part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and once that, so I still take the money in here. And once that uh, revolving fund through the school is set, that money will go there. Um, so right now it's kind of, it's like sitting here 
and mm -hmm. then it'll go over to that fund. I guess I'm not sure if I'm using the right word revolving fund, but yeah. But then, does the money come back to pay your seven and a half hours? Okay. Yes. Okay. That was worked out through the, uh, the you know, it's been a lengthy process trying to uh, help the uh, transfer from the happy kids to. You know, it was eventually, at one point, it was going to go through Park and Rec, but we got uh, kind of <coughs> waylaid at the state and then, you know, uh, some other uh, issues signing up for that process. So ultimately, uh, because of the uh, overhead that the, the school was good enough to step forward and say, you know what, we'll take some of that mm -hmm. uh, bureaucratic aspect uh, off of your plate. Um, but the same time, the money is still worked out. We worked it out through uh, with uh, Linda. And, uh, and, and, and Annie and, and, and Andy have, a, have that set up so that, that those monies are reimbursed back through. So um, that's where part of the funding for her hours comes from, okay. through from the heavy uh, kids revolving. Fund. So basically, that revenue is only paying that seven and a half hours to park and rec, no other kind of programming functions. Right. right. Yeah. Because that money specifically for the after school program yeah, yeah. and to make sure that it continues on. So whether that's staffing needs or um, programming needs on that end and okay and if you were to have a clerical support or like an assistance position added would the idea be that some of that would be paid from the after school because they would be doing both or no, is it strictly parking park park rent yeah okay, okay. <clears throat> I mean, should the, the program needs at the after school, I'm sure it's something we can always communicate with the administration. Mm -hmm. If there's additional time that's required, then we can get, you know, work out a, a, a new deal, so to speak, to make sure that that reimbursement comes through. Mm -hmm. But right now, I mean, it's seven and a half. I'm sure that uh, the reality of that is, is very different than, uh, you know, than what's being built. <coughs> Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I think I don't want to hold you up too much, but I think right. the, on, the only other thing that I would touch upon would be um, like the storage needs for park and rec. You know, mm -hmm. it's a it's a great it's great in theory to say that we have a space in the library, but um, all joking aside, someone walked by my office one day and said, "Is this the storage closet?" <laughs> because it's a lot, you know, to say that like we did have some space in North Hadley Hall and. Um, that's great to run down there, but clearly that's not going to be the case anymore. And then we do have some space in the library, but it it's a well thought out plan until you're actually living it. And then you're like, oh boy, <laughs> it's right up to the ceiling in the office. And um, I mean, best case scenario, we would have a center or somewhere to have all our stuff and do all our programs, but that's not the case. So I think that um, in the future, something to think about would be somewhere to store all of that or you know I don't know there was talk at one point of uh, storage in the basement here but I don't know I've never been down there so I don't know how that all works out but that I think is great in theory to say oh we've got the library but then you know you're trekking up two flights of stairs on a Friday afternoon and you're trying to pull down what's in what Tupperware and where's going where's this going and this is Halloween and now I have three different holidays in my office and Christmas is coming and I'm like mm. Do you just have to be climate controlled, or could it be something like a, a shed or Morton building on the school property, or something like it's, that? It's, some of it is is best to be um, uh, well preserved, uh, mm -hmm. you know, away from whatever can get into a shed. I mean, obviously, you know, we do have a shed that's still active that still maintains a, a lot of our outdoor programming is that uh, supplies. That's a right. that's, that's that's okay. Was, that was put in place uh, 2003. And that has all our sporting uh, equipment and things like that. And it it's our, pay, our lining equipment that we work with the school to <coughs> line the, uh, the additional fields for soccer uh, for, um, um, for our programs. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, all of our outdoor stuff is, is in the sh that shed already. So what, do you need what more I think of that space? What's that? Do you need more of that non-climate control uh, space? I think that, uh, well, a lot of what we're after is like the Halloween decorations and the Christmas decorations, those types of things that, that do take, you know, we have a, I'm sure, you know, it's, it's those who, who attended the uh, Ragshack event at the Legion can attest that we have a lot of gear that comes in uh, to support these annual programs, mm -hmm. Easter program, what have you. And 
all that takes space. Is it best to stick that in a shed? Well, you know, it depends upon how long you want to keep it and how much you've invested in it. I certainly don't want to put the Easter Bunny suit out in the shed. Do you think Easter Bunny suit? Do you think that, that, no. <laughs> you think that the, the Master Building Committee is meeting next Monday um, to talk about the use of the library once it's uh, vacated uh, and moved to their other one? So, you know, certainly. I would maybe speak to them. I, we haven't really decided what the use of that building is going to be. Yeah, um, at one point the building committee was talking about re relocating or committing some of the Goodwin to uh, to Park and Rec. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, you would have the downstairs that would it's dry it would be a good place for storage, at least a piece of it. You know that mm -hmm. possibly those things could get worked out in that area at that point. Um, but again, it's where it, uh, everybody's in the discussion stage about it right now, so certainly put the plug in there. Right, just thinking to the future. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. you know, we and certainly would talking. like to make room for all those that need it. I think we're kind of working at that at this point. But until everything, well, when the dust is settled, then we can see where, you know, what we actually have for space. Mm -hmm. And along that line, it sounds like you're, you're making a uh, plug for having office space actually in the school. Are you thinking about like the elementary school or? Well, at one point, Annie and I had talked because I do run back and forth to the school right. quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the point that we had talked, there was not, uh, there was like space on certain days, but you know, people share offices at the school. Some people don't have a full office all the time. Um, and that's not exactly good either to have non consistent office space. Like, this is great here to have a, a space yeah. in town hall. I think more people see me. Um, at one point, I'm not sure that everybody knew the face behind Park and Rec, no matter how many things I go to. Um, I think that's just the case of not living in the town kind of thing. Like, you're not here all the time, but you do go to things. And so I get a lot of emails that say, Dear Park and Rec, instead of Dear Jenny. You know, that kind of thing. Um, and now my last name is different, so there's that whole battle. You know? um, but I think that it's good to be seen here every day, but it would almost be better to be where the events are so like if I'm holding all of my things at the school it's maybe better to be at the school and have everything there however if there's no storage at the school or no office then that's also not you know that's not going to happen either because so right now I'm running at three different spots like North Hadley has some of my stuff the library has some of my stuff the school has my programming so I'm kind of a lot of that but yeah. I think that's also the nature of the beast in Hadley. If there's no, you know, we're just kind of yeah. for yeah, the having, having lost our resource at North Hadley Hall, which was yeah. a great uh, uh, place for operations, where we had office and storage. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, obviously we're uh, you know gutting out, so to speak, through this transition <coughs> period. But hopefully that uh, you know, as as you said, the dust settles. Hopefully we can you know, find some additional space to help support the programs that that the community uses. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what we'll aim for. Sorry? That's what we'll aim for. So on December 10, uh, 12th, Thursday the 12th of December, about 10 o'clock, we're going to have a coordinating meeting, start planning some of the budgetary issues associated with the building transitions. Uh, so you're more than welcome to be part of that, uh, that discussion. Um, and um, you know, it'd probably be fruitful to have your your perspective on how this uh, the, the new buildings coming online, and the transitioning of the Goodwin Memorial Library to some sort of new future use, uh, and coordinating the operations, capital, and uh, maintenance uh, budgets for those uh, properties and departments that would be affected. Thank you. David, you had something? No, I was just going to say that, uh, just real quick, I would, I think the good one would probably work well, at least the basement for, for, for storage and maybe for not necessarily an office in the basement, but an office over there. Um, I know that the, the schools, both schools, are a challenge for office space and also for security reasons of having people should come in and try to make payments and things like right. that. That's an issue. So mm -hmm. I think it might be an easier goal to, to get to the good one rather than in one of the schools, but mm -hmm. that's you know, up to the, to the superintendent to look at. Makes sense. <coughs> Do you 
do you have anybody in mind for your administrative position? Like, is there somebody that's expressed interest or? We haven't even approved it. In the I'm budget not. Yet. I'm not <laughs> saying. No, no, no. Just because I see that as being a hard position to fill, <laughs> right. and I'm just asking because I know, how, being somebody that hires people occasionally, it's like it's hard, especially those part-time mm -hmm. positions. Well, so I didn't know if you had like. A person or a parent or somebody that somebody expressed interest in yeah, where I mean, it would be like okay they'd be willing to make fairly low amount as opposed to a high amount and how you do all that I'm just putting it out there because the cost is going to become an issue and right. and well, where where does that land you know when that position was staffed in the past historically it wasn't actually that hard because the hours were pretty amenable to uh, those who might be, you know, mm -hmm. stay-at-home parents. parents. Yeah, and, and, that's what I'm uh, thinking. Yeah. That kind of time that would be available to help us when we need that, and you know, it's a relatively, uh, lo you know, it's a lower stress environment and mm -hmm. it's in town. So a lot of those things lower are in stress. favor. <laughs> <laughs> Helping you. Out. <laughs> <laughs> You're really selling it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> working with little kids, no stress. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we're it, kittens. Could, it could also be an in, in like a paid internship or accredited internship. Mm -hmm. um, just having that background, that those are things that teachers kind of push you towards. Um, like go go work real time with somebody and yeah. see if you actually like that and want to yeah. do it, you know, or or get that experience. Well, you we know. that's what I was going to say. We voted to allow the DPW to hire summer help. Uh, two years ago, yeah. I think it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it, we were kind of aiming at high school seniors that might be willing to do some, you know, some work to hold them over till college time. Would that be something that basic clerical work that they could help at a, on a part-time basis, at least during the summer hours, that may be a little bit less expensive for the town, or? We have to put them to work in the summer program. Uh, that, yeah. yeah. That's, that's hands-on experience. So yeah. Yeah, it may be somebody who is, um, <laughs> I don't want to spend a lot of, a lot of time speculating yeah, on what the, what the potential uh, employment uh, uh, pools are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, suffice it to say, it wasn't hard in the past. Okay. Um, and I think that um, I went to a, a seminar at Springfield College this not that long ago, um, and I spoke to one of my old professors, and I don't know that there's much criteria we would have to hit in our job description to hit their job board mm -hmm. for internships. Um, they have to do so many things while they're interning, and the boss or whoever is in charge of them has to mark off so many things and go over so many things with them. But I don't know that we would have to hit so much for them to be mm -hmm. on that. So um, I could absolutely, absolutely go meet with him to go over that if that was something you guys were leaning toward. I think that would be a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I encourage you to get it listed so that seniors who are looking for the tax work off program could apply for that position. Is there a lot of those with a lot of skills? I, I, who did I have last year? Did she pass? Dorothy. I had Dorothy at Easter time. <coughs> she helped. She just stuck the eggs. Yeah, she, she stuck the eggs for me. Oh. Mm -hmm. And then she quit going down to the treasurer's office. She scooched down to Jenny's office <laughs> to see if there was anything <laughs> she fun in upstairs. Park and Rec <laughs> before she came upstairs. Yeah. All right, well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And see what we can do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, one other quick comment while we're briefly talking about storage in North Hadley Hall. Mm -hmm. uh, I know this is off topic, off SWAT, but um, what is the, do we have any updated time frame? We do have a lot of goods still up there. We've sold a bunch for the, the, the Friends of Park and Rec had to generate income, but there still is some uh, up there that... Uh, Are we being evicted? Do we have to get I mean, it's, it's <laughs> It's not going to be immediate because I think we're still waiting on a conservation commission vote. It's still got to go to the legislature, all those things before we're able to officially get the land out of Article 97 to then sell the building. And the fire so, station's not going to be ready until when? July. So. And then we've got so the fire trucks there as well. Probably looking so at six months. I don't know if there's months. any update. Okay, great. So the uh, uh, conservation commission is scheduled for December 10th to take that vote on North Hadley Village Ballfield. So you've got a couple months at least. I mean, I would see if you could get it out of there sooner rather than later, but you yeah, know, he's got some garage space. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah well, that's. I don't is, know. is any can any of that? What do you put have? in the uh, library basement right now or no? 
really they're pretty well packed. Yeah. I think they're pretty or upstairs. Pretty uh, yeah. TV five's upstairs. Yeah. And there's a little bit of room up there. It's pretty full too. That's, that's where our stuff is. John has some room in the back of his truck, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got room in your van. Yeah. No, we're All tight right. on space for stuff like that right now, I think. But and down, I mean downstairs here is packed too. Oh, yeah. There's nothing. <coughs> And I don't know if, the seams. if there's anything else at DPW. I mean, there's some storage space there, but I think that's pretty limited too. So yeah, yeah at least climate control. There's nothing. There, so. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. All right, and Board of Health, Emma. Thank you for coming. Hi, yeah. Um, thank you for having me as a representative for our department. So um, I so think. I don't know. No. Um, I did mention last night. I reminded everybody at our meeting about the thing tonight, but um, but I guess I'm, I'm here, so that mm -hmm. I'm glad I'm able to be here. Yeah, thanks. Um, so certainly with our department, uh, we've been reevaluating the work that we do and the needs of our community and how we're going to be delivering those services. Part of that review has been really taking data, looking at best practices for the area communities within the Pioneer Valley and how they're delivering that service model. One of the things that we've really identified is that we're a small town, um, but we have big city problems, especially, and I hate to say problems, but impact with all of the restaurants in town, the 20,000 commuters that and students and everybody that come into our town every day, really anyone who comes through our community our department impacts because health and safety is is our wheelhouse right and um, I think anyone would would be safe to say that we really want everyone who comes in our community to feel like they're getting um, safe food or good community health programming and good regulations around those so what we've really identified as inert needs is um, technology improvement, which we're really excited that that recently got passed, the um, capital improvement last week or the week before. So we can start looking at um, technology and software. Uh, we do have a, a, a link, um, a, a connection for, and we're looking at a one year grant um, for software for inspections um, in the interim until I think Town Hall as a whole is looking for a more collaborative um, and single platform fix for that. Uh, other parts that we've been working on is, is some grant writing and exploring grants for funding throughout the state with the community health improvement projects. Um, we also uh, did a small grant that we applied for for disability inclusion um, to see if we can uh, really get our name out there. We developed a Facebook page, which isn't, we don't post all the time on there, but there was a lot of great um, feedback and awareness for the North um, Lake Warner with the cyanobacteria this mm -hmm. summer, um, which got shared probably about 15,000 uh, like 15, times, which was wonderful. Um, and we had a lot of great responses for that and also connections for other areas. Um, Dick has been going or just recently went to the Mass Health Officers Conference. Uh, we've been working a lot on educating ourselves so that way we can try to really be delivering a professional service model um, and having the education that uh, really the people who are instituting, implementing, and reviewing the needs for boards of health that we're executing those in a good way. Meaning like I've recently been, um, I just took a Title V course and uh, I'm probably recently, um, or hoping that I pass, we'll find out in about two weeks uh, if I can be a Title V inspector. Um, and we've also been working on food code, restaurants, trying to get that stuff on board and really improving our knowledge base so we can provide the community with what we need to move forward. Certainly we, we don't have any regular staff in our department, which is a real challenge. Um, every week uh, we're trying our best to go to those interdepartmental meetings um, with the building department, conservation for all those projects mm -hmm. that we're working on. 
Um, we've recently uh, been having representation, although I'm not always able to get those there, but the department head meetings, which is certainly new for us, uh, we're really just looking forward to improving our connection um, with, with all of you and everyone else in town hall, but also um, I know we're really excited about Haley uh, with the Senior Center and, and also reviewing the current way that we have our town nurse program, but exploring how that's what we all envision in the future with what's gonna make the greatest impact for the community as a whole um, when that when it gets finished and everything like that. We're really excited about that. So what kind of questions do you guys have for me? I could go on forever, but no one wants me to do that. I got one for you. Oh, goodness. <laughs> so um, talking about inspections, mm -hmm. are there inspections that we should be or could be doing that we charge fees for mm -hmm. that could partially offset, say, a part-time health inspector or completely offset a part-time health inspector? So currently, um, we certainly every year explore our, our fees um, and our permit fees and reinspections. That's also come up in the dialogue with us on the board uh, in the past <coughs> couple months. Um, I definitely think that there are there's low hanging fruit for ways that we could improve on that. Currently, right now, if we have to reinspect a restaurant because they don't pass an inspection or um, if there's a residential issue that we have to keep addressing and going out and inspecting, that really the time that, because we're not, the, do, the actual act of performing the inspection is one part of it, but writing up the whole paper part of it, writing up those correction letters or, or letters um, to address the issues, those take time. For every single residential expense, um, incidents that we have to go out for it takes about three hours of backlog work to actually make those be successful um, in the end so I think there are ways to do it but certainly I'm not I'm part of our board Greg is chair um, and I think it's a it's a decision between all of us that would have to have a majority for that I do um, it currently with food uh, based off the risk-based inspections for the um, mass DPH uh, only about I would say 38% are funded the rest um, that we do uh, recheckups if there's uh, an incident any residential needs any community needs us as board members are doing on our own time which is really quite t timely you know it takes up a lot of time did you get a copy of what we did with the building inspector uh, and array changes for I don't, extra inspections? I don't think so. Did, that did would you be get great. a copy of that? And let's yeah, more so look at it. When you have to go back up the second time? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we so just changed that I don't know, a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So you're able to change your fees yeah. because you're an elected body separate from the select board. Um, you can do that without coming back to a select board. Yeah, yeah. you guys can regulate it yourself and, yeah. and charge you an and an additional fee. For yep. Yeah, one of the things that we've been doing is is looking at that, and then also for the amount of work that we're doing that's unfunded, doing kind of a costing study around that. And so, be your fee structure. You said thirty eight percent our of our reimbursed by the state. So so thirty eight no. No inspection, nothing for us is funded by the state. Okay. Um, there are 351 independent boards of health in the state of Massachusetts. There is no state funding. They are all locally funded, which is one of the big barriers for us. That's why um, uh, um, two months ago, um, I applied for that big community health improvement uh, grant, which would be amazing if we do get selected for the next step of that process, because um, I think the way that I view that as, a, as an opportunity because right now we're trying to think of successor planning and what the long longitudinal goals for our department is, um, as well as the town, right? Mm -hmm. And how do we meet those goals? And if we are able to get that grant um, so we can institute all of the practices that we should be doing, or at least a good chunk of those, um, I think it would be a huge weight uh, and a great demonstration for the town with all the impact that we can be doing. Because I, I think, 
not just for me, but I, I know when I've spoken to Jane uh, in the community, one of the things that uh, we're really excited for is, is expanding what the health department does and, and do education. Um, go into the school department. Um, I know that I've spoken with Mike Spink Nabel about that with partnering up with their community um, program for that, for the students with Hopkins. So I think there's a lot of avenues that we can go that just really haven't been explored. And I don't think that's ever been with intention, but I think... Um, Wouldn't you hook up with the school nurses in, in the elementary and the high school to broaden their... <coughs> Um, what they offer there too. Yeah, so I did speak to Annie a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. um, I think we definitely want to collaborate with them and encourage them and support them, but it always gets hard um, with the school department kind of being its own structure um, and where we come into play in terms of the board of health and the health department within the community because of the different budgets and also um, with them being under the teachers law, um, the MTEL, the DESE stuff, uh, I think I think it would take someone who is a nurse, we're nurses, right, um, but to really help make that possible. Uh, I think if there was someone who didn't have a, necessarily a direct care, patient care health background, that it could be challenging for them to kind of navigate with the school nurses, um, but certainly uh, with the school department not reposting the supervisor position for the school nurse. That's something that I know Annie and I had um, had some discussions about wanting to possibly explore in the future. Yeah. They don't have a supervisor for the... They don't. They decided to not repost the supervisory school nurse position that used to previously be filled by Renee Denenfeld. Right. Yeah. yeah. So what they have is a nurse in each elementary and high school. Yeah. Which we had years ago. Yeah. So, uh, but certainly being an ally with uh, the superintendent, with it being a new year for that, not having that reposted and possible needs for um, assistance with maybe state paperwork or application processes that certainly would not be wanted to necessarily be burdened um, by those school nurses because school nursing is extremely busy. Um, they see so many kids. You were never busy when you were doing it. No, I mean, I still stop. <laughs> I'm doing a, the fifth grade uh, field trip on December 4th, so that's going to be fun. Um, but they don't just see the kids. It's so much case management. They're involved in IEPs and 504s. They're trying to consistently do continuing education. Um, school nursing is, is not the school nursing from, from when I was in school. Um, so I think really seeing them succeed as well. I think all of our health programming really coming together mm -hmm. in the town is really important to me and um, I think really important to everybody. But mm -hmm. I don't want to put myself on people. But it's good. Super. And since, just one more question. Oh, David, go ahead. No, please. no you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to ask you about inspections and just, you know, we have the building inspecting, mm -hmm. inspections department and if there's anything there I mean, I can't see what the electrical inspector also being able to do health inspections, but maybe there it's not unheard of in different towns. I don't know, yeah. you know, where it's like. Sure, so yeah. in bigger towns, sometimes they do have an inspections department. Yeah. Kind of uh, like Northampton does, Amherst does, but there are certain challenges with that. Mm -hmm. um, and especially with the regulatory requirements to make the professionals in those roles, performing those, be able to do them in a safe, consistent, manner right yeah. um, so you have some quality control I think that's part of our challenge right now with with us as board members um, having to do those fill-ins right we don't have the same daily repetition the expertise that we're doing it all the time that it's it would be uh, it, it makes it challenging um, I do know that one of the things that we're constantly exploring is is also how we're delivering our inspections program um, and I think we've already had some discussions on how we could possibly um, improve that the, going forward this next year um, and maybe looking at an RFP or some other kind of thing for that. So, okay. yeah. Super. So, do you have a capital budget that was approved at the special town meeting? Very so excited. Can you share that 
60-60 with it, uh, the select board. So if you could start spend, you may start spending out of that capital article, but if you could coordinate with us on the IT. I thought we were both funded for 5000 Were they paired together? They were paired together, so it's a $10,000 article. Okay. All right, but so just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had um, already started discussions about that yesterday okay. with how we could move forward and everything like that. All right, so that's that's green go, ready to go. Love it. All right, and we also provided $5,400 for an administrative assistant for the Board of Health. Yes, and so. that'll be great because certainly we have a lot of um, clerical admin stuff that would be wonderful yeah, for someone to help out with. Start recruiting for that. That would be fine. Okay. Great. Right. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you for filling us all in. Okay. Sidewalk maintenance. So excited. Get oh. your shovel out. It's that time. So oh, I, sorry, I'm not pulling it up here. Pause. There's no attachment. No attachment. But there is a letter that we prepared. Prepare it's for. in that yellow in here. folder with a CS on it. Christian. Dave's Christian. going to shovel. I am going to get a snowblower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you read it. You have to yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a reason why I was there. Do I have to join you with mine? Uh, it's addressed to Peter Kavici, the uh, District Highway Director, uh, DOT. Uh, please accept this letter as confirmation of our understanding that Massachusetts Highway Division District 2 will maintain sidewalks in the state layout along Route 9 in the town of Hadley. Starting in the winter of 2018-2019, the Massachusetts Highway Division District 2 agreed to maintain state-owned sidewalks and keep them clear of snow and ice along Route 9 in the town of Hadley. Sidewalk maintenance is very expensive and difficult for small towns, and the select board appreciates working in partnership with District 2 to keep sidewalks passable and safe for the coming winter seasons. Thank you for your attention. Um, Not sure about those dates. 2018-2019? We're already past 2018. Starting in the winter of 2018. So this starting. 2019. I know. They didn't do it last year. Yeah, but the, uh, they, they made the verbal commitment yeah, that they, they would do it. They would do it. But it yeah. isn't it. Uh, That's why we're doing What do I want to yeah. say? It's not just for those two years. we got to say infinity. In, yes. Yeah. Starting a year ago. Start, understand starting this. in the winter of 2018. This is the new normal. Forever. Because we had, they did it verbally twice, on at least twice on camera. On camera, yeah. Mm -hmm. Committed to doing it, but then yeah. they never followed through. So. Mm -hmm. so if you think those dates are going to make it so they're going to take us through the And they did such a great seasons. job last year because we ended up having a plow. They, only did, year, they only did going over the bridge. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did they, they even make it over the bridge? I don't know. So do we need yeah. to approve this, or just Christian's just going to sign it? Or is this just for our awareness that we're sending this? Hey, this is, okay. this is, do you want to look at it in more detail again? No. This is to remind them of their commitment that they've made to us. <coughs> yeah, um, no, yeah. but I'm saying do we need to vote? or? I think so. I think that Okay, I make a motion to approve the sending of the letter signed by the chair, so reminding the DOT of their obligation. Mm -hmm. Second. Any further discussion? From from here on, yeah, so I'm saying on here on in. Oh, do you want to? I, I don't want starting in the winter of 2018. We just want to from not here on do in. it last year. Maybe do it this year, and that'll be it. Because yeah. uh, that was that letter said. I'd like it worded so sure. that it's uh, forever, <clears throat> what, infinity. Well, maybe yeah. Christian and David can kind of tweak it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's fine the way it's written. It, it just says starting in the winter, the Mass Highway Division agreed to maintain state-owned sidewalks and keep them clear of snow. So I mean, yeah, this is a long-standing commitment on their part. Long-standing. Yeah, standing so it should cover it. it should yeah, it should cover it. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay. So, so we'll all good. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I've got one more question along those lines. So snow. Yeah. Since it is that time of year. Do we want to, uh, I guess, reaffirm our position that the TPW does not touch Route 9? Sidewalks like last, last winter. 
No, well, that's the state we're doing it. But uh, last winter, we said that we were not doing it, and we left we left it alone. So it was either um, individuals that did it, or if the, if the state didn't do it, no one did it mm -hmm. because of the cost and the manpower. So I want to be able to go to Chris and say, "Here's Def what your directive is." So. De definitely. Okay. So mm -hmm. are we all? So yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. You want to take a vote on that? Sure. Sure. All right, so I'll make a motion that we uh, reaffirm our policy from last winter that the state is responsible for Route 9 and that the hazard DPW will not clear sidewalks in the state layout. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Right. And we have Senior Center. Although I do agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I just hope center. they keep up to their side of the bargain there. That's yeah. Why. I'm just worried about the liability, you know. Mm -hmm. Senior Center Library and Fire Substation Building Projects. Somebody like to go first? And mm -hmm. fire? We, we just had binded the area up there and um, the binder was on and oh, well. they continued with the construction, so it's moving along. Great. Okay. Um, library's going fine. Uh, I think a lot of conversation right now is really around the finances. Um, you know, borrowing, working with the treasurer, making sure she has the information that she needs. Um, again, hyper focus on trying to figure out a way to make sure that we build the best building we can for the town, um, which I'm sure is everybody's goal um, for the the money's at hand, so towards that end, I, um, there's a coordination meeting that's going to happen with a couple of folks from, I think somebody from the trustees, Patrick, uh, library building committee, uh, David, Linda, really want to sit down and go through all of the finances and where the various sources are coming from, and you know, maybe it'll be something coming back to the select board at that point. but. Uh, kind of where we're at right now. Again, it's just a different situation. The library budget obviously is extremely tight. Fundraising is going <coughs> fairly well. So, Can we make the, it? Okay. the completion date of the senior center and the library, the library are going to be very important in planning any kind of budget adjustments uh, towards the end of the projects particularly given that we have an annual committee coming up on May 8, 2020. Um, I have a completion date for the senior center. Um, I don't have a solid projected, that'll be a projected uh, completion date for the library. Do you have one of those? A solid one? No. Yeah. Okay. No. Towards the end of the summer is my understanding. Yeah. Right? Okay. But that's kind of... Right. which is part of the, the reason we really need to lay out what what the project's going to need and when it's going to need it. Mm -hmm. so. Can I just confirm, is it May 7th, maybe a Thursday, rather than May 8th or Friday? I just want to make sure I got For what? For annual town meeting. Well, let's see. Thursday. May 8th is the Friday, it's the 7th? It's the 7th. So, okay. Always so, on so Thursday. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that... I'm not going on a Friday. <laughs> you will be. <laughs> We've never had it on a Friday. Imagine the F4. Oh my God, it's on a Friday. Can we make sure that we schedule a um, yeah, meeting every Wednesday right. that month? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I know, that would be good. Probably more people would show, there right? There you go. Why don't we first, apply with the select board? First Thursday in May, whichever, whatever that is. <laughs> <laughs> So, Senior Center, I do have one change order, but uh, just, Jane, I don't know if you want to describe what's happening over there. It's moving right along. It's moving I mean, right along. David and I did a quick tour David today. David got a tour today. What do you think? Uh, it looks like a building. It does look like a it building. It actually has no drywall, but walls and ceilings and well, ductwork. The, first, the and, first ceilings. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know when the paving is going to, the paving like proximate to the building, when's that happening? Aha, Wednesday, unless it freezes. Okay, all right. 
Yeah, yeah. and the, that will also include the Legion lot, which they're working on right now, well, as you have all noticed. That's why I was asking. Just, yeah. Yes, yes. Talk Hopefully, to the, Legion the plan is dinner coming up on Wednesday the 18th. So the today. plan that's is this. dinner's today. They had a dinner today. Yeah. That's it. And then next month, next month. Next month. Next month is the 20th, I think. Oh, the 20th. The plan is, unless there's a major freeze, we're all set. Mm -hmm. Rain yeah. doesn't matter. And it looks good. And it's looking good. The, the yeah. Legion lot. They're doing a fine job on that. In the front end of the senior center, they're finishing laying the lines for the uh, outlying <coughs> light poles. The light poles, electric ones, yeah. Right, those are going in. And it's all moving right along. Yeah, and is it Forish the, uh, over there doing the Legion lot? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. it's oh. his people, yes, Crestview. Crestview. Yeah, Crestview is the contractor, Flourish is the general contractor. Mm -hmm. I'll give them. Uh, credit for their communication. They brought up some issues that were discovered, and uh, so we were able to avoid some future costs and future uh, issues mm -hmm. that they brought into our attention, which is good. So. Yeah. We're very happy with Porsche, and some of these change orders you're seeing are because they are on the ball and looking at potential things that would be better done now than later at a much greater cost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they'll be putting down just the binder, binder coat. They won't yeah. even putting down the top layer because they don't have any time. Mm -hmm. um, Which well, means it will not be striped until the top layer is on. Yeah. So once everybody's they want to get the binder down. So when they start doing the finish work in the senior center, yeah, they're not they're tracking. not tracking all that mud and whatever yeah. and snow mm -hmm. and ice. Somebody can ice sweep and, once yeah. and be done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. Retaining walls are up, sidewalks are in it. It looks really good over there. Yeah. Nice. Um, so the the change order here we have tonight is proposed change order number twenty two R two, and basically it's cost to provide millwork and plumbing changes as outlined in PR zero five R by EDM. Um, <coughs> so this has been a, an item. The main bulk of the item is 19,767. Oh, I didn't give the total, I'm sorry. The total on the change order is $26,994.26. And the bulk of it is millwork subcontractor, which is $19,767. And then a finished carpentry subcontractor, I'm assuming to install that material for $8,500. And it's a series of storage improvements um, in different rooms. I, I tried to tally it up earlier. I think there are one, two, there's eight different rooms. It's adding upper cabinets, adding multi-tier adjustable shelves with uh, different brackets, and then adding a countertop and splash with steel counter supports typical of three, so I'm assuming there's three of those in a different room. Um, and it's a bunch of stuff to improve the overall shelving, workability, storage of the the area. And Jane, I don't know if you had any other things no, to just, add about I it. I do have, if you'd like to see, um, <coughs> I don't know how visible it is. But what happened was when we went through the details, we realized that, for instance, in areas where there were cabinets, there was nothing between the top of the cabinet and the ceiling. And because we have lost space, we're always looking for storage, and putting storage in now is the time to do it. So they're making additional cabinets to go in that upper area. In places like storage for the dining room tables and the dining room chairs, the wall space above those is going to be shelved so we can have that for storage. Otherwise, it's just sitting there empty space. In the nurse's medical equipment room, where we have wheelchairs and walkers and commodes and crutches and anything you might need, um, we're adding some brackets and a shelf because there's some things that need to be on a countertop. Um, just for your information, I would say there isn't a day that goes by that we don't get a request for somebody for medical equipment. And at the moment, um, because we have no place for storage, 
the DA is doing that for us, but we look forward to having it in our own space again. Where am I sending people? Because I do the joint center class. So you call us and we send them to No, the I just send people to call you. Right. <laughs> so, so we tell, we tell, I tell my patients that look to your senior centers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Greenfield Jail mm -hmm. actually has them also, um, and other places where the seniors might be. Yeah. Hampshire County Sheriff's Department is handling it at the moment for us because we don't have the facility. Okay, right. good to know. So when we Thank get you. a request, we call Dave Fenton, mm -hmm. and he delivers it. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that will change when we're back in our own space. You will call, you will want to walk, or you send either you or your aide down and pick it up. Mm -hmm. And it's a no fee rental, no fee borrow because yeah. we yeah. haven't paid for them. People have donated them when others have died or finished using them. Mm -hmm. But it's a very useful service. Oh, absolutely. Is, you know, you don't think about how, how often it happens until you're sitting mm -hmm. in the office writing it down. Mm -hmm. So, so we're adding thirty, close to thirty thousand dollars for shelving that wasn't spec'd out in the original, because we hadn't thought about what we were missing. Yeah, I didn't. Don't know if the text went out, but we got something. Uh, asked the architect to put something together for us, um, and sorry, I'm just reading it here quickly, but. They had already <coughs> kind of gone through the bid process, signed on to Forish, all these things, and they were reviewing the design for storage and storage cabinets, but it kind of happened after the fact to go down, dig into the detail of that, those storage needs, so. We just approved was one point out to bid. what for media last week? Yes. Can I just point out that two thirds of the town voted to spend seven point one million dollars for the senior center. Mm -hmm. We are well within that budget. The town did not specify whether it should be for plumbing or paving or media or cabinets. They said build us the best center and do it right the first time. Here is the money. True. Thank you. However, um, my neighbor's being quiet right now, so I'm going to jump in. Um, it also is feeling as though, again, the town, the, we voted the $7.1 million for a particular size building. The building was downsized, and you guys did a great job explaining this last last meeting that you know it, it isn't you know dollar for dollar just because we went from twelve thousand to ten thousand you don't just take the per square foot cost and lock it off right? because there's a reason up there so I get all of that but you know some of these changes came because of the downsizing three of these closets shelving. yeah three of these closets weren't in that orientation at all <coughs> when we had them before we didn't need them because we had room in the room for the things. They weren't in compartmentalized places. And this this was in the numbers that we were provided last week? It was in those numbers last week, yes. And I forgot my sheet that I had that has those in there. Um, so if you give me a minute, I can pull it up. So I have two things. We have. Yeah, I thought we just talked about all this stuff last week. We didn't start home. talk about shelving. I, I knew I brought this up yeah. briefly last week. Yeah, but um, there was one so the, the pink that rooms are ones that are getting upper cabinets, mm -hmm. and the yellow spaces, closets basically, are getting added shelves. And the nurse's office is getting that um, change in the counter because it turned out that um, the sink had been designed on the end and it's better off to put it here because if the nurse is sitting in a chair at the end of the counter, she's not mm -hmm. hitting the sink. That was the end. Right. So this is what the difference in the three rooms cabinets are going to be going up to the ceiling. Well, the squeezy lines around that. Yeah, so. yeah. So three of those. Okay. 
Well, I just know that it did come in under budget. I mean, we may not be happy with some of the uh, things that happened because they didn't do the right measurements and things like that. That's, that's understandable. Um, to me, as long as you're staying within budget and not coming back and asking us for any more money, we're not and we will um, have money left over when we're done and you know to me that's you know storage is something that every place needs no matter you don't never hardly get enough of it so i don't have a problem with the storage and part doing of it. it now is the way you go well you don't want to do it later exactly you know do we have any other ones coming down the line here other than maybe the uh key oh so we thing? spoke about that and i've asked them to get us a price on that um it's in fact already wired because they knew in the future it would be wanted so it's really just the reader that's going to be the addition and that should be something that's not terribly expensive we were trying to see if we could get something you know it would be nice if the fire substation town hall we just approved that yeah. senior center all were on a very similar system like what we're doing with yeah, fire I alarms i think we were talking yeah yeah we have so. it up we, at the sub fire station yeah. yeah, so Mike's, we're trying to figure Mike's out Mike's going to put the same one in at the new sub-fire station as we have in DPW we okay. did. and the town hall. Mm -hmm. but the, and the Gary was going to get us that information yeah, for the scene. Gary was supposed to yeah. find out if uh, security could be just added to the town hall to those units because those units are the same, same units that we have security and uh, fire on now. Yeah, so... The ones we just put in town hall. So okay. there. So speaking of fire, there is one change order coming down because of some sprinkler work that's required, and that was a, uh, you know, AHJ request. So that was the fire chief asking for that um, particular area. That could be. I've got five thousand dollars budgeted, but that's not an, a firm number yet. So like, in the numbers, I can give you this change order we're talking about right now was 33,000 it's now 26 994 but with all that we had 483,970 dollars still remaining in the project budget um, how much 483,970 okay so I'm in I'm inclined to say yes on this one, but as far as I get it with the, the sprinklers, things like yeah, that, yeah. that are necessary. Car but keys. The, the, yeah, but, but any nice to haves coming down the line, I'm going to be a heck of a lot more critical with because we've had a lot of nice to have changes and they're starting to add up at this point. And so, um, like you said, it's we want to build the best building we can, but at the same time, I just want to be throwing money at it because we can. So I just I want to be a little bit uh, careful on what we're spending. So. All right, motion to accept the change order. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Well, I, I, I understand your hesitation. I mean, I could have brought this last week. I wanted more detail on it to try to give you guys the best picture possible because I know I knew that it was going to be a hard one coming here for $27,000 for shelving. It's a well, hard it's sell. So, but I, I, I understand that. And, um, you know, said, the stuff I, that we, I, we know, the project, yeah, we know life safety yeah. stuff. That's, that's yeah. fine. That, yeah. that stuff comes up, but the nice to have things have got us go in. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Photograph. So thank you. Photograph donation here. Select board thanks the family of Agnes Krasnowski for the generous donation of a framed aerial photograph of the town of Hadley. It's right there, Jennifer. Todd's not here, so I'm just going to assume it's his camera. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, what date was that? Um, I, Agnes passed away this year, so it just has the her birth, 1932 to 2019. Oh, nice. nice. That's cool. And it's in what section of Hadley there? It's actually uh, River Drive is here. This is um, East Street. East Street here. East Street. Okay. Yeah. Where's your house, John? I don't know. I'm looking. I could tell you what your house is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really, it's a really nice picture. And yeah. I told her we would hang, hang it at somewhere in Town Hall. The yeah. Elementary schools there. The water oh. towers. So. Oh wait, mine is your house is there. <laughs> yeah. Molly's front and center. <laughs> yeah. picture there. Right nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. Great. 
thank you for the donation. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you very much. All right, Joyce, you can look at it. Okay, um, any announcements this evening? Christ Congregational Church is now selling tickets for the cookie walk on December 21st. If you don't know what a cookie walk is, um, it saves you from having to do all your Christmas baking. The church people bake probably 25 or 30 different kinds of cookies. You pay $13, you get a container, and you walk through and pick the ones you want. The container holds about two and a half dozen cookies. Some people buy more than one. They make great gifts, and you can get <coughs> tickets at the church. Nice. Thank you. Anything else? I'd just like to thank the new formed uh, shade committee. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, a very nice uh, presentation and dedication uh, this past Saturday to Helen Waskevich. Um, it was well attended. It was uh, a little cold, but um, I think we <laughs> we still had we had a very nice showing. Um, but uh, they did a very nice job, and I can just look forward to seeing what else they're going to do. Thank them very much. Great. Anything else? Yeah. Oh, I have one yeah, more. I got so one more going. thing. Um, so here we are. We are coming to the end of November. Uh, of course, we all wish you a happy Thanksgiving for for next week, but. Um, it's also coming into the winter time, and I just want to send out a reminder to people that have wood stoves, pellet stoves, any type of wood, um, please be careful with it. Um, we've had uh, uh, Sarfly, uh, Worcester lost a firefighter in, in going into a house, and I think we all need to be mindful of how we take care of our burning materials after that they're done. Um, we don't need any more tragedies in Massachusetts, and just want people to be aware of that. Which also brings me to the fact that um, we all have fire hydrants near our houses. Um, DPW always can't get to it in a timely fashion if we have a big snowstorm. Um, certainly would be beneficial if you would like to save a life or save somebody that you don't know when the fire is going to be. So I would like people to um, kind of be responsible for the fire hydrants that are near them to make sure that the um, firemen can get to it if they need to. So um, just the beginning of the season and take that into mind, please. Thank you. Cheapest form of fire insurance. Hi. Right. Cheapest form of fire insurance. It is. Even yes. if you're only being selfish and thinking about yourself, you can <laughs> save your own house. <laughs> <laughs> you have to fly your driveway anyway. Yeah. So you might as well get up so it's, just, it's just a, a nice uh, gesture for, for people to do that. Any word on the Heavenly Mother's Club? Uh, that's this Yeah, I was going to say, we didn't do time of the mystery <laughs> report. Should we do that? Oh, lunch with Santa is December 14th. Oh, see? Oh, okay. See, you've got a plug in here. <laughs> we yeah. don't have the streets outlined yet, but the normal, I think. They love that, the kids. Absolutely. Right. All right, so the um, North Hadley Village ball field is coming up for a vote with the Conservation Commission on December 10th. This is a requirement before we send it off to the the states, so that's an important uh, vote, and uh, I plan to be there for that. Uh, the affordable housing uh, DLTA study grant, uh, we have our final meeting scheduled for December 11th. It will be a very busy December 11th because we also have a donation by the East uh, Hampton uh, Savings Bank, uh, and we'll be doing a photo op earlier that day. And there'll be a presentation at the select board that night. But the, uh, the uh, affordable housing study should give us an action plan going forward to, uh, to deal with uh, our need for uh, providing affordable housing in the town of Hadley. Um, we've been working a lot on the tax recapitulation. With, uh, submittal to the Department of Revenue. Uh, we had all of that ready to go on Friday, and Department of Revenue did not uh, 
have a record of some of the material that we submitted, so we resubmitted and we appear to be okay at this point. So that project is now substantially complete. Um, next is the free cash. The free cash unlocks the end of year uh, report to Schedule A, as well as uh, the FY19 audit. So we need that done, and so we have uh, taken steps to make sure that that gets completed in a timely manner. Our revenues through October are uh, meeting our expectations for the three categories of uh, revenues. That would be taxation, local receipts, and state aid. Our expenses are running a little hot, but uh, within normal. Um, and so we'll be watching that. Uh, the uh, uh, Human Resources Director, we welcome Mr. Edward O'Connor, who will be starting on December 2nd. And we have an office and all the equipment ready for him. He has provided us with a uh, mission statement, which we posted to his web page. And we'll be negotiating with uh, PVPC for a contract for accounting services. We expect to have it available for the select board on December 4th. Uh, All right, yes, uh, we have a executive session on the agenda for tonight, but that is going to be canceled. So we need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Have a good night. Happy Thanksgiving. Aye.